Hello, I'm J.R. Pandy, the No BS Gardener, and, and I'm taking a break today. I've decided it's a hot day and there's nothing better in a hot day to kind of take a break and sit underneath a shade tree. I'm surrounded actually by a Princeton Gold Norway Maple, a Forest Pansy Red Bud, Ruby Red Horse Chestnut. This is at one of our uh, shade gardens here at Pandy's. And today we're just going to show you some different plants that will tolerate and do well in shaded areas. Now what you're looking at here, the short ground cover, is purple, purple dragon lamium. I love this in a shaded area because it brings the purple coloration in there as well as that white variegation in the leaves. Panning back a little bit, there is a blue angel hosta. Uh, it's spiked up with some purple blossoms. And that mass of foliage over there is Solomon seal. It gets a great white blossom in this late spring of the season and just it spreads in clumps and really, really is an amazing plant. This is actually planted under a very, very old specimen Japanese maple. We've estimated this upright Japanese maple and it has a name that I'm sorry, I cannot say. Um, it's just a Chinese or Japanese name that goes on forever. and we believe this to be around 35 40 years old so here's some plants here that stay right around three to four feet in height uh, when you talk shade you're mainly talking different varieties of um, or textures of green because it's the sun that really keeps the color in all of the plants but we have some different varieties of uh, ink berries here um, some compact varieties Moving along, we've got uh, the Japanese holly, which comes in a ton of different flavors. Just a real rich, broadleaf, deep green texture of a plant that will tolerate shade. Even boxwood, as you pan over here to the right, are um, shade tolerant. Moving a little further along, if you do want to get some color and you have partial shade, now partial shade would be I would say two to three hours of, of decent sun. These are rainbow Lakothi. And once these get some size, I mean, they're just bursting with color throughout the season. To the right of those are um, Calmia latifolias or um, mountain laurel. This is actually the uh, Pennsylvania state flower. And I wish I had a picture of the flower on this guy. There's one there. It is an amazing, almost um, fake type of blossom to them when these flower. It's just incredible. And then the Pieris over here, Pieris japonicas or Andromedas, they just get loaded, loaded, loaded with blossoms for the spring of the season, and they're one of the first thing that bloom in the spring. Um, they get a little white, miniature bell-like, almost a little of a valley flower to them. And they come in different varieties. This one, I believe, is called Red Mill or Mountain Fire. The uh, new growth on these are a vibrant red, and then it changes to a light green and then to a dark green. Great plant. Now, this shade. next plant we're going to be looking at is uh, Lemon Beauty Honeysuckle. I believe it's a box honeysuckle. And what's great about that is once you get them in the shade, now we're growing them out here in sun, um, they get that great variegation of color in the leaves. The other cool plant that I found a couple years ago is Edme Gold Honeysuckle. Gold in shade is really difficult to get, um, and these guys actually do very well in a shaded environment that gives you that rich gold coloration. And next to those are Forsythia. Forsythia, because they leaf out so early, can be planted in a shaded area, enjoy the bright, almost fluorescent yellow first sign of spring flowers and then, um, you know, of course, the green leaves. This particular one is called Show Off and appropriately named, a little smaller to the left, Sugar Baby. They just get loaded with yellow blossoms. So it's a plant that we usually think in sun, but it's also good to work into uh, shaded condition. Okay, so if you're looking for something a little taller in shade, um, Sweet Shrub or Calicanthus floridus is, uh, is a great plant for um, shade as well. This, what's cool about this plant is it gets a brown blossom, probably about the size of half a baseball. Really, really fragrant, hence the name Sweet Shrub. Over here, um, Sweet Bay Magnolia, 
can uh, tolerate a shaded situation. This plant is amazing. It's, it's getting the seed, uh, seed pods built up now. But the flowers here smell like you're at a perfume, um, perfume parlor. Just uh, gardenia-like, white, just intoxicating. Moving down here a little ways, Korean Spice Viburnum is another really fragrant plant. Viburnums do well in the shade. And they come in all different shapes and sizes, textures. Over here we've got a Marie's, a double file viburnum. Really a thick, full, heavy duty plant and gets a white, almost a layered single file blossom to them in the spring. And then the uh, another one here is uh, summer snowflake. And this guy blooms on and off all summer. So it's kind of a very unique plant that will give you some flowers year round. Well, up until the leaves fall and fall. Now if you're a bee lover, uh, September Beauty Summer Sweet, especially if you have an area that's a little more moist, a wet situation, the Summer Sweet do very, very well. And as you can see, it comes in a white, or there is a variety called Ruby Spice, which has pink blossoms to it. And those will tolerate more shade. Now more shade plants, hostas, hostas come in all shapes and sizes from teeny tiny eight inch tall like blue mouse ears to this is a medium sized one called sub and substance. It's kind of at the end of its uh, end of its blossoming here. Um, but this gets a real nice sized leaf to it. Been in about three years. It's probably three and a half, four feet across. Behind that we have planted some astilbe or false spirea. That's a great, great plant for shade. Behind me here, we've got some ostrich fern surrounded by some um, hydrangeas. The chicken is excited today because we're back near his garden. So what we're panning on now is um, triceratus or toad lilies. They come in three or four or five different flavors. And what I love about these is it's mid-August, they're just starting to bud and bloom, so it's a perennial that blooms later, and the flower is almost like that of an orchid, and those do real well in shade. I'll just pan over and show a couple other hydrangeas, which are always award winners in shade. Now, if you're looking for an area to kind of naturalize, this is hardy English ivy which is really good for shade, as well as Pachysandra. Again, just a real rich green color. Pachysandra does get a little white blossom to it. It should be blossoming here shortly. So we've snuck into one of our growing greenhouses here, Pandies, and we're looking at, this is a hosta anculpa, uh, which gets 40 inches wide, 19 inches high. It's got a cool, unique coloration to it. Next to that one is Minuteman. Third one over would be Patriot. Patriot I love because it can grow in sun or shade, and that coloration in those leaves is just dynamite. Another new variety for us this next season will be Blazing Saddles. There's just so many different hosta, so many different textures and colors. And again, these are just small ones that are just growing. First variety here is called First Frost, which is kind of unique. And here's one called Earth Angel. What a great name for a plant. And Fire and Ice. That's going to be a bold one. Really great coloration there. Okay, this is my favorite grass uh, for shade because, again, you know, the yellow coloration. This one actually is Japanese forest grass, Hakonikloa. And it's a mouthful to say, but this kind of naturalizes 
it gets approximately oh, 18 inches tall and probably a width of a couple feet. And it's just great uh, for a shaded garden, which again, you don't get a lot of color in shade, but that is a great, great one to, uh, to utilize there. And then another grass-like plant, uh, Lear Rope or Lily Turf. This is big blue variety here. It's a great little plant that if you just need a small plant, you get the benefit of a purple blossom to it. Usually late July, early August. Great plant for the shade. And I would consider um, the dwarf fountain grass. Uh, that'll tolerate some shade. Again, you're just looking at green varieties. If you try and put any blues or colorations in there, you're going to lose that color because you need the sun to keep that. So this is one uh, dwarf fountain grass that'll, that'll tolerate a shaded condition. So hopefully I've given you some ideas of plants that'll tolerate shade from small to large. A uh, couple things I want you to remember. I have a lot of people that when they're putting um, plants in around trees, they want to bring in a ton of soil and put it on top of those trees. And I really don't recommend that. I'd rather see you put a little bit of soil in pockets in between the roots and then plant in that area. Uh, another thing you can do for color is bulbs. Uh, tulips, snowdrops, crocus, uh, daffodils, they're all kind of naturalizing bulbs and they're the easiest thing to plant on the sun. Just dig a hole, drop them in, cover it up, you're done. Nothing, nothing easier than to do that. Um, keep in mind that a lot of plants that are shade lovers love a real rich humusy type of soil. So compost is a definite plus as well as the old grower secret aged pine bark mulch, soil conditioner, that stuff is just worth its weight in gold. Bring that in with a little bit of topsoil um, and always, always fertilizer. Always want to use some fertilizer to feed those plants and nourish them along the way. The uh, final thing is watering. When you're planting underneath or around these trees, you may have to double up on your water until those plants get established. As Soon as I say that, I'm worried that people will kill with kindness so make sure the plant is dry and you water it thoroughly. Keep in mind though that this tree is gonna suck up a lot of that water. So even if we do get a, a fairly decent rain, maybe go out afterwards and, and give those, those newly planted plants uh, a good drink. So that's it for today. Uh, I'm JR Pandy, no BS gardener, and I just tell it like it is. Thanks for watching.